Hello everyone, welcome to this video SQL Stored Procedure Real-Time Scenario Based Question. In this video, we will be discussing some of the date functions, aggregate functions, partition by, case group by, order where between and some stored procedure things like declare, set, execute, select, into, alter, if else, block, etc. Moving on to the question for today. We will create a SQL Server stored procedure that uses window aggregation functions to find the maximum sales, sum of sales, average sales and number of customers by year and month from the sales order header table between the previous month start date and end dates. Sorry, I forgot to mention we will be using the Adventure Wax 2019 database which we have used in our previous SQL videos as well. So this is the main SQL part which we'll be dealing with. Uh, next things, next steps are about the procedure. So let me explain to you what we are trying to achieve through this. Let me show you the code. Since we have to calculate all these things by year and month, we'll be displaying using the year function to display the year, which is 2011 in this case month to display the month maximum sales which is the maximum total due will partition it over the year part of the order date and the month part because we need it by year and month this is what is meant by this statement same applies for some average and count we are counting the customer ids the table which we'll be using is the sales order header table okay Next thing is this should be between the previous month start date and end date. So we will use a where clause and order date should be between any month's start date and end date. So whatever here in this example we are taking it for the month of May for 2011. Finally we are ordering it by the year and month. So this is will be the main block of SQL in our SP. Next task would be the procedure should accept an input order date from the user. So we cannot have this hard coded there. We have to accept an input date and based on that date, we'll have to find the beginning of the month and the end of the month. And that should be the parameter being used here. A next point is the data is refreshed the second week of the month. So the procedure should check if the input date is greater than second week of the month. And it should also check whether the date is less than the maximum order date and greater than the minimum order date. This we are using because our database has data from 2011 to 2014 only. Because of that, we will be using this condition. If the date is outside this range, the procedure should display relevant message to the user. So we are done with this. Next part would be to get the previous month start dates and end dates. So let me show you how we can get that. We'll be using EO month function. So what does this month, this function do? So whatever month we are selecting, it's selecting the end of the month. Let me get it as 23. Then also we see it's giving us 31st March. Now for getting the previous months, right? We'll have to use a date add function. We'll pass since we have month lag right we'll use a month parameter here minus one is for the increment or decrement so since this previous we'll be using minus one and any date which we want so let's keep it 23 so this statement is going to give us a lag so it will give april and end of month will give us the 30th of april okay so this is our desired result this is how we'll get the end of month for previous Now to get the first of the month, we'll have to use the date from parts where it accepts three parameters. In this, we'll passing the year part. So for the end of the month, which we will be getting, we'll pass the year part and we'll pass the month part. And then finally, so it accepts a year, month and day and the day will pass one. So if we see this, it should give us first of May. Now to get this through the previous 
month instead of this end of month right we'll replace it with the end of month date add which we have seen it in the above so if you see end of month and we're using it a date add to get the lag so this the above one gave us may they should give us april first okay so this is done in a stored procedure we'll have to just instead of this value we'll be passing a parameter now let's move on to our stored procedure the so create a stored procedure we'll have to use the keyword create procedure procedure name since i have already created it i'm using the alter keyword okay so this is compiled i'll explain line by line we have to get an input date that is the order date from the user therefore i'm using a parameter at the rate of user date so you can give any name but at the rate is important the data type for this will be date that's why i have mentioned it as date next we have to give the keyword as then begin so this is this shows that our procedure is beginning we'll be declaring a few of the parameters or variables now first of all we'll be using an input date which is of date type previous end of month previous start of the month second week max order date and min order date we'll use a set command here to set the values for this so for input date whatever we are entering the user is entering or during the execution of the procedure that date will get assigned to this input date for previous month as we have seen here we'll be using the same formula but here we'll be replacing this with the input date which we are getting so just replace it with the input date at the rate start of the month also same just the date is being replaced by the input date to get second week here we'll be selecting the date part we'll pass in the day and we'll give the input string so what it will do it will like if it is 31st it will give us the 31st of the day part of it okay for a month next would be we need to uh, set the max order and min order where the max order would be the maximum order date from the sales order header table and min will be the min order date from the sales order header table this is done we we'll have to store this into a table so first of all we'll check if the table which we are going to create is present is not null so you here refers to user defined tables if it is not null then we will drop it okay if it's already existing we are dropping it now here comes our condition we'll use the if condition if block where we'll check the at the rate of second week is greater than 14 so for the month since second week the date will start after 14 so we are checking whether the second week is greater than 14 and the input date which is given to us is greater than the minimum order date and input date is less than the maximum order date so if this is true so this is automatically creating a if block will select star into the sales test so th this is the way we are creating a new table called as sales test select into this from inside the bracket we'll have to give the statements which we have discussed so this is a statement we'll be giving only difference is we'll replacing this between with the variables which we have so in between we'll use a previous month start and the previous month end dates we'll close this and give a temporary name to this so it is the if temp i have given and then give a semicolon because every statement should end with a semicolon in procedure so this is how if and then we'll go to the else block in else block we are again selecting or creating the same table and here we'll be inserting the uh, our results to the i mean relevant messages if there is a, the date is not correct so here we're selecting the distinct order date and the max date to show to the user and if the input date is less than the minimum date then we will display the output 
input is less than min order date when input is greater than the max order date we'll display input is greater than max order date else we will display that data is not refreshed because the third condition is this right all the three conditions we have covered with relevant messages will end this case statement with the name result so this will create a new column called as result this we are selecting from the sales or a header table again as we have done in a previous one we will since this is creation of a new table we'll give it name to this which is l stamp here and we'll end it with a semicolon finally since everything is done we'll end the block so this begin which we started initially that should have an end to, when we click on execute this will compile the process for us now let's try calling this function So first I'm trying to call this, okay, let me show you the dates here. So the max order date is on 14, 30 June, May 2011, uh, 31st of May. So this is out of the range greater than maximum so let's try executing it and we'll have to select star from our table okay so input is greater than the max order date let's try 2010 So 2010 here the input date is less than the minimum order date. Let's try something which is in the range. So since we entered here the month of June, it gave us a value for fifth of the fifth month which is may okay this is the value and if we check it in our original one where we have shown the value for may we get the same result uh, to test the last condition let's enter something where it's not the second week so we have executed it let's try here so the result is data is not refreshed i hope this was clear thank you so much for watching if you like the video please subscribe to the channel for more such videos